Hello and welcome. So if you've been following along with this series, we're numerically calculating psychrometric properties. And the first case that we were looking at is if we were given a dry bulb temperature, a wet bulb temperature, and the total atmospheric pressure. And these are measurements you could have gotten from a sling psychrometer and a barometer for measuring the total atmospheric pressure. And so far, we've already used the wet bulb temperature to figure out a saturation pressure, to figure out another a humidity ratio at a given temperature, which gave us the actual humidity ratio of the air. And we did the same thing, this kind of same process using the dry bulb temperature. We got a saturation pressure and we got a saturation humidity ratio. And from there, we were able to derive a formula for mu, which is the degree of saturation. So these parameters were some somewhat temporary. We're usually not interested in these in particular, but we're always very interested in the humidity ratio of our sample and possibly degree of saturation. And what we're going to solve for next the relative humidity. So let me remind you what we came up with in the last video. Oh. Oh. Forgot how to draw. We came up with mu is equal to this fractional statement with relative humidity over 1 plus 1 minus the relative humidity times, actually it's not, times omega, that saturation, divided by 0.622. Now, what we want is, we'll want a relationship for relative humidity as a function of mu, and actually, we're going to use something different than the saturation humidity ratio. We actually want to know or use the partial pressure. Actually, I'm mixing up my symbols. The pressure of the vapor at saturation. Along with, along with, erase that, along with the total pressure. Because we already we always know that, and that's a easy thing to come by. So what else have we found? Well, if you remember way back in the beginning of videos, we know that humidity ratio, and if you're at saturation, that is equal to 0.622 times the partial pressure of the vapor. And if we're at saturation, we'll say it's at saturation. So we knew this relationship. And so what we can do is we can take this formula and we can substitute in for this. And now we have a relationship between our degree of saturation, relative humidity, and these pressures. And at that point, it's simply algebra in order to solve for relative humidity. Now, it's, this is a little convoluted on the algebra and if you look in the fundamentals it's not exactly clear how to do this so I'll actually work through this step by step so you can see where that final formula in the ASHRAE fundamentals comes from. So if I go ahead and I divide this equation both sides by 0.622 I would get something that looks like omega saturation over 0 0.622 is equal to partial pressure of the vapor at saturation divided by the total pressure over PV, PV sat. And so we have this fraction here. That's the same fraction that we have here. So we can replace this with this term over here. So let me go ahead and do that. So if I do that, I'll get mu is equal to relative humidity 1 plus 1 minus 
dat we met die PV sat over P total minus P vapor, pressure, pressure, vapor, and saturation. The first step I'm going to do is take this whole bottom of the fraction, I'm going to multiply it by mu. And I'm going to distribute out right away by mu. So if I do that, I'll get mu from this one plus mu times this whole term. So I'll get one minus phi times PV sat. And I'll put that all over. And that will equal relative humidity. At this point, I want to get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply all the terms in this equation by this right here, this term right here. And so let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to distribute out a little bit right away. So let's, let's do this as mu, and we have this times total pressure minus mu times PV sat, and we're, we just get what was left on top of the fraction here. And actually, let me distribute this as well. So we would have mu times 1 times PV sat, and we'd also have mu times negative phi times p sat. So that actually becomes a subtraction. So we'll have mu phi p sat. And that is all equal to, I'll make this a different color, phi times that bottom of the fraction. So now we have this all on one line. It's a little nicer to look at. One thing nice that you'll notice right away is that this term and this term cancel out. We had a positive mu PV sat and a negative mu PV sat. And so all we're left with is this mu term on this side. So we're left with the mu times the total pressure. And if I move this term to the other side and I pull out that phi, I would Hopefully this isn't too big of a step. I have the original two terms, but now I added this term over here and took out undistributed this, so I have a plus mu PV sat on this side. And now what we've successfully done is isolated out the relative humidity. So. Now we just have to solve for that, and we'll put it into the form that you'll see in other places describing this algorithm. So we have phi, and I'm going to put this like this now in a fraction. And that's all over what we had here before. And now there's nothing wrong with leaving this equation in this form. It's actually a somewhat more straightforward form, but I'll, sh I'll continue on in a form that you'll see it more often. And what we'll do is we're going to pull out a total pressure from this bottom so it cancels out with the top. So if I did that, I'd get a phi. The top remains the same. And if I did it like this, I took this out. So if I did that, I would get a 1 minus, and I would have PV sat over P total plus mu PV sat over total. And these will cancel. And now you'll notice I can simplify this further by taking out a PV sat over PT. And if I do that, this is the final step of this process. 
I have relative humidities, the degree of saturation mu all over 1 minus, and let's pull out PV sat over P total. And if I were to distribute that, and I wanted this term here to be negative, this would have to be a 1. So if I had minus 1 times this times 1, I get this minus term here. And I need this to end up being positive. So if this negative sign is outside this whole term and it's multiplied by this, to get this to be positive, I have a negative times a negative times mu. And there you go. This is the form that you'll often see it in. And so now we have a relation for calculating relative humidity based on degree of saturation and partial pressure of vapor, which we've already calculated previously, along with the total pressure that's been measured. So, and in the next videos, we're going to continue on. We still need to figure out specific volume and enthalpy and a dew point point temperature. So I hope you'll join me for those videos. See you soon.